we'll catch up later. Wow. Well, John giant ruler. <laughs> I am uh, John Carmen. This is Mike Wojcik. And uh, Hi, we man. actually did our first session at PodCamp was actually at Bootcamp. Boot camp. Yep. And it was a session on installing WordPress. And it was a really basic session. And it ended up being even more basic. We were going to do a five minute a five minute install in about 45 minutes. Um, we didn't get there. Uh, we we spent most of the time talking about the difference between WordPress.com and WordPress.org. Oh. Yeah, to set the stage, boot camp was actually a conference that was kind of placed between the first pod camp and the second pod camp. Yeah, really for kind of introductory, you know, just you know, getting you into and understanding the differences and the features of WordPress. So we actually, it was it was a very introductory. Yeah. So John, I got to want to say the groundwork here. This is basically for self-hosted uh, WordPress users, WordPress.org users, and generally a little more advanced. They actually asked us to do a more advanced session this time, so that was the focus of this podcast. So if you don't know anything about WordPress or what WordPress is, you're probably not going to get much out of the session. And we originally actually wanted the chairs all be in a circle, but we just didn't have enough room because it's intended to be more of a discussion. We're not going to stand here and tell you, like, these are the greatest plugins. Oh, sure. Yeah, go ahead. Sure. Uh, these are like great themes. We kind of wanted to put up what we like and then have a discussion about what you guys like. We get some as well. Uh, Mike's going to talk, I guess, more or less about the themes because I don't know anything about um, custom or uh, premium themes. Yeah, I mean, one of the things that I'll talk, we'll both talk a little bit about plugins, but one of the things that I find that I have a little bit of experience with, and I'm curious to hear what the crowd, you know, your perspective is on purchase themes. I mean, one of the things that's kind of become, you know, a, a phenomenon in the last year, if you might say, is probably the, the purchase theme, people creating themes, actually selling them online. For anywhere between, I've seen this cheap as you know, twenty bucks, thirty yeah. bucks to, you know, hundred and fifty, two hundred dollars. Just thesis costs. We were, we Eighty-seven. Had a Eighty-seven. Yeah. yeah. So that's like the you know one of the rock stars of themes. Yeah. So we'll talk a little bit about that. I'll be curious to hear any pros and cons experiences. So. And once so again, this is very again, I'm just real quick, like John said, this is you know this is open. We definitely want knowledge sharing. If you have an opinion on something, you know whether it's on some of the stuff that we're showing up here, or there's plugins that you swear by, or you know important features that you swear by. You know, definitely, uh, yeah, definitely. One thing that we did, we just created a delicious page for each of us, um, or a delicious tag called Plugin. So um, if you go to delicious.com slash Carmen Avenue slash Plugin or YPGH slash Plugin, those are respectively each of our kind of favorite plugins. They're the ones that uh, I use on pretty much every install of WordPress. Insane. Yeah. yeah. They're, they're the staples. staples. Yeah, yeah, exactly. There are some, and there's a ton of them actually that I use. It's kind of shocking how many I use, but um, you know, I've just accumulated so many over the years. And you know, there are some plugins that do very specific things that aren't on there, but these are the plugins that I use for almost every install. And I thought it could be like a good icebreaker or just to start the conversation, kind of go down the list, and then if anyone else <coughs> says, hey, I use that plugin, or you know, there's another one that does that better. Um, so I mean, this, this actually at the top is not a plugin, but it's a WordPress plugins podcast. Um, Angelo Mandato from Blueberry. I don't know if they're sponsored this year. They were sponsored last year. They are, and Angelo's here. Okay. So, you want to tell us about your podcast? <laughs> um, well, I nerd out and review a plugin. Yeah. I also like to interview plugin developers and plugins. Awesome. So, I brought a, a mic, so I think you want to hunt me down. And Tell me about this Angela, you're actually having a session later at Pod Camp as well? Yeah. Is that tomorrow or today? Today. Today? Okay. What, what is it? Which one? Um, what is it? Is it? Oh, we're plugins podcast. All right. Yeah, I got it. So, awesome. Yeah, I guess that is the schedule. Okay. <laughs> no, this will be good. It'll be good. Yeah, you know, exchange of you know, oh, yeah. definitely. So, what, what plugins have you reviewed so far? Um, I'm at 47 episodes. Really? Um, some of, most of them are actually interviews, and uh, lately now I guess plugin developers have contact me and just want to be able to show them. Yeah. Perfect, because then they explain the plugin rather than they're trying to explain it. That's cool. Um, so bookmark five. I actually did a blog post on this. I reviewed ten different bookmarking plugins, social bookmarking plugins. These are the ones where you read a blog post and it says, you know, add this or retweet this or whatever. Um, for various reasons, and if you're really interested, uh, you can check out CarmenAvenue.com for the post. Uh, but that one I use on pretty much all 
blogging type blogs, like some blogs are set up and they're using a WordPress backend, but they're not necessarily blogs, but just a blogger who has other bloggers reading it to understand social media. That's one of my favorite bookmark and plugins. So you're saying, I mean, you're, it's comparable to add this or share this? Yeah, it gives thing. you a list of uh, different services that you can choose to display. Yeah. So like Dig, Reddit, and all that. And say, for example, so it gives you, it will give you a laundry list of 30 services. I mean, Facebook, MySpot. Yeah, and really you can find choose which one you want to actually use. Yeah. And so my tip for actually for bookmark fire, any bookmark plugin, is to choose the services that do the most good for you. Because if you give someone a laundry list of 30, they're not going to add your, your blog to all 30 of them. So if you give them one or two, they might actually use it. You don't overwhelm people. Yeah. Uh, WW Redirect, do you use that? I, I usually do. I mean, if you have the access to some of the technical underpinnings for yeah. the website hosting, you can do a web redirect. But if there's a case that you decide to change your URL, it's just so easy. Yeah, you know, it's yeah, just no. like one plugin. It, it's already set up yeah. generally. It just redirects your plugin from HTTP it's to nice. www. So you have one address. Yeah. So I need to, you know, if you type in uh, where Pittsburgh.com, we'll go to www. Yeah. I mean, you could do it with like some of the guts underneath for the web hosting. This makes it very easy. So very easy. Yeah. One click. Very easy. Oh, oh. Uh, WP license, Creative Commons license. Um, there are a number of Creative Commons license plugins. Does anyone use one? Or does anyone license their content? Or thought about licensing their content using Creative Commons? Because many people probably license their Flickr, right? You know, by default, Flickr is not licensed for Creative Commons. It's all rights reserved. So I always encourage people to go in. And again, it's one click, and you can retroactively license all your content. Well, this is the same thing for your blog content. For anything that you put on your blog, anything that you put on your WordPress hosted site um, will be licensed. You choose which license, so people have to give you an accreditation. Uh, you can license it to not be, be allowed to be used by um, corporations. And uh, by the way, a session plug, Rob, who is just walking away there, Rob is doing a session on Creative Commons today in a match. I think it's really cool. What is that? Um, one o'clock. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So check it out if you're more interested in yeah. creating comments. So. Uh, Ajax Edit Comments allows your users to edit their comments. So once they post something and they realize that they were angry and drunk, uh, they have about. <laughs> you can set the amount of time that they have. I think the default is 15 minutes. I think I usually change it to about 30 because sometimes it takes a while to sober up. And uh, you know people can just click on their comment and edit it for that period of time. Now see, this one I wasn't familiar with. That's really cool because yeah. I don't know how many times. I've, you know, you always get a comment on a, on a blog post, right? Somebody writes something, and even if it's a minor grammatical or, or you know spelling mistake, sometimes they'll come in and they'll, they'll follow up a comment immediately that says, oh, I really meant this. Yeah, so yeah. Get another comment. Or they email you. Or they email you. Or they email you. Yeah. How about, oops, here's that link. You yeah. know, that's like the most common comment ever. Yeah. So so that's that's I mean I wasn't I wasn't aware of that one. Really if cool. we have any designers in the audience to do your own themes that you know it requires most of these comp, uh, plugins actually require a little bit of customization to the CSS, whether it's the plugin CSS or your own. How many of just I just out of curiosity, how many of you in your WordPress hosted sites have gotten you know gotten adventurous and started to edit the themes and, and, and change a lot of the structure? Okay, so some, but, but uh, some that happened. You're very bashful about it, too. It's okay. But <laughs> Jason's down there like, yeah. All right, um, WordPress SEO pager. Um, that's a pagination. So if you have, uh, you know, instead of like next blog post, last blog post, it'll actually show how many. I really like this for search results for older blogs that have a lot of content. Um, it just makes it look like a Google search results page. And I have more search plugins further down the page. Uh, WordPress reports is very simple. It's just your reports from your Google Analytics and your Feedburner. If you're using Feedburner, you could be using one or both of those services. Um, I recommend Google Analytics for analytics, but uh, this just lets you check it within your actual administration panel on WordPress. Quick plug-in, just plug in your information. There will be sessions about Google and I think there's a session about Google is there? Analytics. There is not. There is, okay. there's, there is there's not. not. Okay. There, there was a one point, but there is not. Okay. So what I was going to say is the interesting thing that, or a, a cool thing that you have is you have this plugin that will actually just has you hook right into your account and yeah. you know so be able to filter out. out. You'd be able to filter out, um, you know, see information. And you could, you know, with with, with actual analytics plugin, plugin, you can filter out your traffic and do interesting things. And it's, I mean, similar to WordPress.com stats, which 
you know, both Google Analytics and stats give you your stats to your site. I like WordPress.com because it won't um, track your visits to your own site. Um, you know, I just use both, basically. I mean, if I'm going to show a client their stats, I'm going to go with whichever one's higher. Well, when you tie the other one into Google Analytics, aren't you including your tracking Google Analytics? I think you have to set that up, though, but WordPress automatically knows when you're logged in to your site, they won't track you. Yeah, it will filter you because you'll have the credentials. It'll have you logged in everything. And it since, you out. since it's actually uh, injected into the theme, uh, it doesn't get onto the administration pages. So. Yeah. Okay. That's good. I think about that. Are but you're you logged in anyway. So. I, I don't know. Yeah. It really depends on if you're using the plugin or not. What was in between those two? Uh, I'm sorry. Meta was a really good one. Oh, database backup. Database backup, yeah. that is a really good yeah. one. That's yeah. like the first thing I would recommend doing. Yeah. You want to talk about that. Well, I, I'll talk a little bit more about you know backups, not only from a hosted perspective, but you know like at WordPress.com and blogger.com, but also on WordPress self-hosted installations in my uh, session with uh, Jenny Montanez later today. But WordPress database backup is very important. You do not want to rely on your hosting provider that is doing backups for you you know, to say, oh, I crashed my WordPress installation. Do you have a backup? Some hosting providers may have them, some don't. It's better for you to. Google Analyticator plugin uh, does not track the admin when they're logged in. Okay. On the Google okay. Analytics. So if anybody's curious cool. about that, Google Analyticator. Some plugins, yeah, some plugins will not offer, going back to that, won't offer the functionality of filtering out traffic. If you really want to get a, a very discreet view of what your traffic is, you know, because if you're on there 10 yeah, times a day, exactly. checking out your blog and making changes, I you mean, don't want to see spikes because you were updating the site. It'll inflate yeah. your numbers, so that'll allow you. That so above and beyond, and beyond what, what you can filter out through Google, that actually filters out using the admin, so that's awesome. But WordPress, there's a bunch of WordPress database backup plugins out there. Some are better than others. I mean, I've read horrific stories about bad ones where people have relied on it to back them up, and then they go and upload them. So I mean. You know, look at this one, you know, but don't take our word for it. Read forums on the, because this is a critical piece yeah. of you know being able to maintain your content because if you lose your, your database, you're done. And I'm using this one um, for several different versions of, of WordPress, and you can have it email you. Uh, you can do a regular backup, so I just have most of them email me once a week with the backup from the database. You can have it download uh, to your server instead, but then I can't see it, so if it emails me, I know it's backing up. And it, in some cases, I've had to use those backups. I mean, they're good backups. So, so far, I would say that that works yeah. as well as it should. Yeah, yeah. Um, this one, maybe, we have some. You said that uh, you know some people who disagree or who don't like Viper. With Viper's video quick There are a couple text. different video quick tag plugins. Uh, does anyone use a video quick tag plugin? Does anyone ever post a video to their blog? Trying. Or any, I mean, it could be also other media, you know, sorts of media. So. One of okay. you know your two options basically are to rely on each individual site, whether it's YouTube, Vimeo, you know, any sort of you know, blip, you know, they you don't know, have uh, embed codes. codes that you can embed in the site. But th with video plugins, if you click on a button and you just post in the address of the actual, like you just take the whole YouTube address and plug it in. But what I like about it as a designer is beforehand you can go into the config and set the size of all the videos. Um, yeah. So generally, like I like to have all my videos the same width, and then it'll adjust the height proportionally, so you don't have to do the math. Um, and I'll do that ahead of time. And in, in the case where, like with um, YouTube videos, where you can actually design some of the colors of the actual embedded player, you can set that up ahead of time. So every time you post a video, you don't have to do any of that. You just plug in the URL of the video. And then retroactively, if you change your blog's design and you want to change the size of the videos, you just do that in the plugin. It'll change all the videos retroactively. Because yeah. you may have a theme that has a very narrow content right. column, and some of your videos will blow past that, and it'll yeah. just look. You know, and you can also things. override that. So if you want to put a smaller it, video, can you set video. it different when it appears in different places? Yeah, you can override it. Yeah. No, I mean, like, so that on some pages, it shows up one size, other No, no, it's I think it's yeah, it's one set. Small, smaller on that is not a set. Just one, yeah, yeah, one for it's just the default set. One setting. Yeah. And I mean you can embed it in many places, but you're right, it's just it's one set. Yeah. Are you using three twenty uh, as your size or is it very you could use whatever. I mean I oftentimes will set five hundred as a size for it, a lot of it depends on the theme you're using too, and how right. you like that is and if it right. size is 
I mean, but the default brings out, that's, I think, YouTube. Default, default is that you have 320. Yeah. I mean, it works generally. Yeah. So, you know, but it allows, this gives you a great deal of flexibility. And again, you don't have to worry about tweaking the embed code every single time right. you go and, right. and get a, you know. So this, you could take, it, like, I like to have it full size to match the column. So whatever your column with, you can just set that as the default. Right. You never have to worry about it again. This isn't really a plug-in point, but what size do most people like their main content to be? Like normally I expect it to be a your handle 500 pixels. I do 500, because that's the default for Flickr photos. I have a size. The photos, I keep them small. Yeah, I'm, I'm the same. About 500. Yeah. I mean, it's varied depending on what theme I choose, but if it's narrow, I try to widen it out to give more credence to the content. Because the problem is, is with any theme, if you you know limit yourself that way, the amount of workarounds you have to do, yeah, if you have a really nice narrow content, you know, column, it, it's gonna have the benefit of it looking, you know, however aesthetically pleasing. Exactly. And, and so if you go too far beyond 500, the text will wrap around the max. Right. Then you yeah. probably need larger text. If you you know, if you were to just want, you know, embed a Flickr video without having to choose a smaller size or resize it in WordPress, 500 is the way to go. Yeah, yeah. Do we have anybody that's built, even built their own themes? I know we, we've talked about people changing them, so. Angel, I might want to come back to that and ask you some questions about theme when we get into some of the theme discussion, too, so. Okay, four um, four. Useful 404s, uh, 404 are, are our pages, and this one, um, just allows you to custom, and there's tons of actually 404 page plugins uh, that will allow you to create a customized 404 page that gives a little more context to the user when they don't find something in your site, doesn't say sorry, not found. Uh, it'll put, there's a Google 404 plugin that'll use a Google search. I don't use Google search on my site, so I just put my own search on my 404 page. Is uh, it, do you feel it's the same case as the bookmark things where you don't want to put too much on there? Yeah, basically, why do you need a whole explanation? Like, I've seen some really complicated 404 solutions, and I mean, it, as long as it explains to the user that the content isn't there and then gives them a search for it, I think that's really all you need. Mm -hmm. And you can change the title so it doesn't just say 404 error, you know, if you think that your, your users aren't going to understand what that means. See, and, and I, I mean, I have a different, a little bit of a different opinion on this, because I've, I've heard some discussions, and those folks that are SEO, you know, experts in the room, if, if you want to chime in, I mean, one of the things, from Google's side is that, uh, you know, from what I understand, Google does not like the 404. I mean, when when you know you get it crawled and from a from a page rank standpoint, so you can use 404. But one of the things that you can look at doing is actually doing a redirect, do a 301 redirect back to your main page. So yeah. if something's broken, it just sends you to the to the main page. That but way, then the, but then the user doesn't see that something was broken, right? They just go to your main page. Well, yeah, see there a plugin that lets you put a message, an error message on your home page when that happens? It says, you were redirected here because that page didn't Yeah, I mean, that would be interesting. I'm sure there's gotta be you know, some sort of plugin content, which, and maybe it's gonna be something like this, but from just a, a, a standpoint, you're right, you should know when there's broken content, right. but redirecting on the, you know, uh, back to your main page, it keeps bringing that traffic back to the main page so that you know, Google doesn't hit a dead end, or you know, Bing or whatever your search engine of choice is. It, it, it keeps going. You know, it, it, it's going to go back to your main website and continues to establish that page rank because that top level, you know, that top level uh, URL is your, you know, your your basic calling card for your website. So. But you definitely want to try to make sure that people aren't hitting 404 yes. anyway. Yes. And what useful 404s will do is email you whenever someone does. It'll say someone tried to find a link from this page to this page. And then you can figure out what they were trying to click on uh, and fix that. So that's very useful. Um, I'd show you the admin, but I don't think we have time to. We have so many plugins to kind of go over. Uh, Twitter is Twitter oh, avatars. There's, right. a, oh, there's, a, keep missing you. <laughs> there's a plugin <laughs> named uh, Broken Link Checker. And when you run it, it checks all the links on your site and it gives you a report on which ones are broken. And then you can go in and fix them on the back end. So you don't you won't have four on your page. Broken link checker. Okay. Broken link checker. I'm still gonna have four of fours when people search for um, no, no, just or type it in, you, or type in. Links that are broken. If, if people page. type it, but if people yeah. but, but your point is if someone types in the wrong address, like if they just try to type in you uh, a permalink and they type it in wrong, this will email you as well. Okay. So when people create their own four of fours. And you find out what the hell they were trying to find. So. Well, you, oh, Angela? Uh, do you know, does it also have any settings for what the user sees? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It lets you customize the 404 page completely. 
Nice. And you just, I mean, one way to customize through WordPress directly is just to create your own 404.php page. Right. And then you can customize the page. Does um, it add a template? In, I mean, does it add a uh, PHP file with the template? Yeah, and, they, and you can add that too. You just create a 404.php within your, your theme. And it'll use that in oh, okay. yeah. so A lot of themes come with them. Yeah. Right. Um, so Twitter is, is very basic. It's using Twitter avatars for uh, for gravatars, or instead of gravatars. And then if there is no Twitter avatar, it will generally show the gravatar. None of the um, avatar plugins that I found work 100 percent of the time. Like I found that sometimes people's avatars don't show up. Sometimes they don't. You found the same. I, don't, I mean, I haven't actually. I haven't tried to integrate uh, Twitter avatars into that. But even gravatars sometimes. And then some yeah. people say, Hey, where's my? You know, they think it's an issue with your theme. And it's, yeah. No, it's just gravatar not giving yeah. the correct information. Exactly. So, so even, probably, even access is problematic. Sometimes, so. there, there, there's one plugin that actually allows you. Like if you have multiple bloggers on the site, it will actually pull their their gravatar and their avatar and put it in the post. So that's that's an interesting. That's cool. One. I don't remember what it's called. Man, though. There's one. And if we're using just to, just to, or just to put in, if, if there's any terms that we're using, by the way, I mean, feel free. Is everybody familiar with with a, what a gravatar is? Most of the you know WordPress themes nowadays have a picture off to the side, which. When you go to, is it, is it what's Gravatar? I think it's Gravatar. Yeah, yeah. Gravatar. It stands Gravatar. for Global Avatar, but I don't know what the R is for. Yeah, so. yeah it's superfluous. Global Avatar. Blender. But you go there and you set up, you put a picture, and then it'll appear on whatever website that has that enabled on the theme. So. Um, the recognized Avatar. Recognized. The power of the power of the I have one. I went to Gravatar. Or just go to the website. Yeah, so. What is it called? It's a globally recognized avatar. Yeah. I used to use it. Well, okay, first of all, I will use this generally on sites where the users are more techie people, people like that come to PodCamp because they'll have Twitter accounts. Um, you know, I have some clients who their their readers don't have Twitter accounts generally, so I'm not going to bother. But I used to use a plugin. I don't even remember what it was called, but it was uh, my blog log avatar. So it would take your my blog log avatar instead. So that's another one. I think more people are using Twitter than my blog log these days. So I choose that one. Um, this is a really simple one. Time zone for automatic daylight but savings. So functional. Why doesn't WordPress support daylight savings time? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Well, I know we're not. Yeah, but you're not. Gonna <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll get the computer. Um, subscribe to comments. I really like that plugin too. Um, it allows people who comment on your blog to just click a checkbox and get any follow-ups by email. So if they leave a scathing comment, they can find out who hates them afterwards. Um, generally, it, it's unchecked by default, and I think a lot of people like it unchecked because they don't necessarily want those emails. I would keep it checked, but uh, you know, I honor that. But um, you know, all, all the user has to do is just check a checkbox, and then they can go back. If they get too many emails, they can actually go back and um, update their subscription to your comments. And so that's another one that, as a designer, there's a little bit, a tiny bit of coding in your CSS to make that look, you know, tie in with your with your site. So when people go and manage their subscriptions, it uses the same theme as your site. And one of the things that I actually, I mean, just personally, that I that I didn't realize until you know, I, I mentioned Jimmy's blog, thatschurch.com. When we moved her over from the bird blog, the old bird blog install to this, I didn't realize how many people actually subscribe to comments, like to follow comments. I mean, just raw comments. Using that plugin? Yeah, uh, just just generally. But yeah, then I, I started looking into some of the subscribe to comments contains in the email and so on. But that's why I like just RSS. I was really yeah. impressed with how many people are interested in following, like following comments. Just in general, let alone any replies here. Because so your blog so. used to happen, though? I thought I remember subscribing. Yeah, yeah, it did. It did. But I just, I didn't, truthfully, I didn't think anybody used it. I thought it was just an additional feature. <laughs> but there you go. Well, you can use, uh, WordPress will give you a, a, a plugins, uh, not a plugins, a uh, subscription feed that people can subscribe to. There are several issues with that, but for me, I don't check my feeds nearly as often as I check my email. So if I write a comment, I kind of want to know when the conversation happens now. Unless it's Chris Brogan's, don't ever click that on Chris Brogan's blog. <laughs> no, don't follow him. Yeah, I mean, the, you know, the, the other issue is that it's especially for posts, you're going to get inundated with notifications. Yeah, and you're just if it's a really popular blog, you know, like, range just is okay, you know, it can get a bit much. Uh, pick girl, you know, uh, that, that could be a bit much. Um, 
Similar posts. I wasn't sure if I should put this on there or not. I don't use that on every blog, but uh, it'll just put a list, and you can configure how it chooses similar posts. Yeah. There are a number of different. I factors. find your mileage varies with yeah. similar post formats. Like it could be relevant or completely irrelevant. Right, and it'll just show a list of posts that maybe have the same keywords or content as that post. Gee, better semantic mention. Which there'll be a session tomorrow with Master Page. Yeah. Not semantic. Yeah, if you're interested in ontology, the theme I'm using actually does the similar posts. So really? Well, mm -hmm. does it use the plugin? Has it already installed or just does it? Does anybody else have experience with similar posts? Well, the WordPress.com posts uh, all have it. Yeah, and that's built right in. Yeah. I'm it's just, a great, it, uh, um, it, it brings a lot of traffic to your WordPress.com site because other people. Uh, you know, people following your mother at WordPress.com. Yeah, well, that's one of the great benefits of WordPress.com WordPress is exactly. that, you know, if you're reading someone, I mean, it's showing similar posts across the board. This is just showing similar posts of your own content, which is what you want. Oh, 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 oh. It's not getting your content shown on anyone else's blog, but on WordPress.com, you're reading your blog and it's showing a similar post from Mike, so that's drawing traffic to him, so that's pretty cool. And that's where you get the economy oh, so, of so scale. The bad, sort of. the bad matches are bad matches within your own. Yeah, I mean, it'll match on a single word that may not be a re not be, may not be relevant to that post. Sometimes it just sometimes the matches don't really work. Now, also, it all depends on how much content you have. If you have, you know, twenty posts right. in a blog, the more content you have, probably not going to have a lot. Of it's going to find posting. matches no matter what. So if you only have twenty, it's going to find some pretty. It doesn't content. add any kind of field where you can suggest posts, look them up in your own thing. That's I nice. don't believe so. No. No, but it's pretty good. You can configure how it searches for those. You can configure the semantics. So if it's not working for you, change it. And if you want an example of it, I use it on the uh, Bloomfield Now blog, which is a CDC that has, I don't know how many posts you have, but it's been going for a couple of years. So there's enough posts that it actually brings up relevant content at the end of each post. I think it shows three three similar posts. And when I first installed that, I, I wrestled with the idea of calling it similar posts or related posts. I mean, the plugin is called similar posts, but you can change what you want displayed. And uh, related kind of indicates that they actually are related, whereas similar could be anything. Yeah, different, yeah, different, different, different way. But by the way, if there are specific, I mean, while we're going through, I mean, we still, you know, still have a good bit of time. But if there's specifically an area that you're interested in, or you want to talk about, you know, a particular plugin, you know, whether it's like an editing plugin or something like that, you know, please speak up, and we can, you know, kind of we can talk about it. But we're just yeah, know, we didn't actually even plan on talking much during the session, so yeah. So, but okay. but it's cool. Uh, relevancy is uh, one of those search plugins that I was talking about before, um, and there are a ton of search plugins, uh, and I've. I've Try a bunch of them. I like relevancy because it uh, it will sort your search results by relevance rather than by date, which is WordPress's default. Um, it will also highlight search terms like Google does when you search for a word. It'll highlight that word in the search terms and in the titles, uh, and it will also provide an excerpt. I think I usually set it to I think it's 150 characters or it could be 115. I'm really interested to ask me, but or you know what? Do what I did. Go to Google and count the number of uh, characters that they include, so or words, not characters, words that they include in their search results. Because by default, WordPress will put I think too much text in the search results, and it gets kind of unwieldy. So basically, I make my search results look like Google because that's what people are used to, and it's kind of been a good business yeah. model. So uh, it gives a rich search, ex richer search experience yeah. for somebody that's you know browsing a blog, especially with a lot of content on a lot of different you know denser articles. It's right. It's very good. Speaking yeah. of making it work like Google, is there any kind of like search plugin that allows people that when they get to a search result to filter it by media, by like photo, video? If you had like a huge draw. Um, no, I mean, I, not that I know. You can you can certainly filter like categories or tags by that, but I don't know about. So you're saying, Anthony, so like, like it would sense Google. what media is in. Yeah, like when you when you like when someone comes to your site and searches and they get they get 300 results because you're a big blog. Yeah. You know, um, and and then they say, okay, I'm only really interested in. In like photos, because there's a whole photo section to the site or something like that. But you know, like in Google, when you get overwhelmed by results, that you can filter it down from there. I would wonder if there's any kind of tools that. like that that people have seen in a WordPress Okay. Um, and the other thing, when I say uh, to make the search results look like Google, it's not styled like Google. You can still style it to look like your site. So yeah. it's the same kind of layout with your styling. Uh, 
nicer trackbacks, that's another easy one. It just changes the trackback text from that to trackback text dot 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 without the brackets. And you can actually completely customize that as well. But usually I just leave it. It's another one of those plugins that you turn it on and forget about it. You know, set it and forget it. Maintenance mode is good while you're setting up the plug for those few people that actually design your own. Um, sometimes it's easier to tweak the design on the server. So, you know, you're working on your, your local host, you upload everything, but then there's still a couple of tweaks and you don't want people seeing you tweak that. So, or even just changes that you've had to make, or even just taking your blog down as you've had experience so no one can see it. Um, you throw out maintenance mode and you can still log in. If you're logged in, you can still access your blog as normal, but no one else can. Does that have any uh, kind of help in like working around WP cache? Um, you know, but that's like when you have WC Cache is another plugin that is great because you know, it helps everyone uh, download a WordPress site faster. But if you're tweaking your website and you want to turn that off because you have to like be right. saved to the database, so I don't know how that works with WP Cache. Can we get on the caching tangent for a second? Well, and, and that's interesting because I, I historically. Had not used caching plugins, and that was one direct question I was just going to ask to to to, you know, to the audience: is how many of you had actually used them? Because I don't, so yeah, I'm interested. Yeah, I'm I interested mean, to hear feedback. But go ahead, Jason. If you want. I use uh, WP Cache. The biggest problem with the, some of the caching uh, plugins is that not they don't always play nicely with different teams, and they don't always play nicely with certain other plugins. Like I use the WP Touch iPhone theme. So if you go to one of my blogs with an iPhone, it gives you a nice different thing. Mm -hmm. And for the longest time, it just didn't work with WP Cache because the cache regular, right. it, it was a I had a similar experience. I did use WP Cache years ago. I couldn't even begin to tell you what the problem was because I don't remember. <clears throat> but I think it was a plug-in conflict. So I thought yeah, it was it, it, it's, people are actually making plugins to work with it. I think the move really is to like WP Super Cash. Oh well, there you go. Raphael, you you said you had some experience with. Yeah, I've used it on a couple of my sites. Um, it worked fine. I just didn't see the benefit to having it on the site. I didn't see a difference as far as having it on versus having it off. Right. And uh, I personally like to use the fewer plugins the better because I feel the site loads faster. And yeah, so okay. since I didn't see a difference, I just I'd be activated. But you, Anthony, did you see some benefits in it? People requested because other people installed it. Okay. See, what I didn't like about it was that when I made a change on the side, they would still pull up the cache. Yeah, so right. I have to dump the cache and then reload. And that was just too annoying. You can just, you can just They're a lot better now. now. So, okay. um, WP cache, I mean, as soon as I post. Bam, and clears. Uh, but you mentioned super cache. Why would I not use super cache? Mm -hmm. It's super. It's super. <laughs> well, it's um, one of those other things that can mess with other plugins. Okay. I mean, I have read, you know, just you know, you know blogs that you know a couple plugins, of course, and, and write about them. That that you know, there's people that really, really love the caching. I mean, especially at higher traffic websites, you know, it makes sense. But then there are others that have sworn that caching has really screwed up the way that it presents and you know issues. So I guess. It all goes back to your mileage will vary. You know, it, themes could be an issue, but I have read compared to even I'd say a year to a year and a half ago, the caching plugins have gotten much much better. And they and they have and they they update great. Yeah. Now I have one uh, somewhat slow page on my site, and that's the only reason I do it mm. um, because I don't use any like the podcasting plugins. I actually have some PHP that runs straight in WordPress. And parsing I didn't put it. I didn't put it on here because it's specific to podcasting. Um, but Blueberry does make the best current podcasting plugin, and I've tried them all. But you also wanted to say something. Oh, yeah, it was a caching. Um, contact your web hosting provider and find out if they already do something. Because That's a good idea. I, I set up my own server with a an app with PHP and an Apache called the Accelerator. There's a couple others too. And if that's already installed on the server, when you enable these caching plugins, they're not really going to do anything that's already being done by the server itself. Yeah. But if you're on like uh, one of the cheap GoDaddy accounts, that the, the or, I'm sorry, the, the caching and the super cache plugins do wonders because then it just 
stops all that extra loading. Stuff. Yeah, that's a, that's a, that is a really good point. Um, when we roll, when that church was rolled out, we were rolled out at first on a, a, a shared hosting infrastructure, and I did not want to introduce caching to it because of you know I just wanted to make sure that the, the site went up and it was okay. And we set, we had a lot of load issues early on. We rolled to Media Temple, which is you know fairly well known grid based you know service that that, that is you know is quite good. And I didn't experience any issues after that. I mean, it was getting hit by CNN and other websites. So it all depends on how good the hosting is. I mean, super cache or ca you know, whatever cache you know mechanism you're using is not only to mitigate any potential bandwidth issues, but it also can make up for potential shortfalls in your hosting provider and make what is a four dollar a month hosting account seem like it's you know sixteen twenty dollar whatever a premium hosting account. Which is, that's a good. Thing. And if you're seeing huge traffic like from CNN. Um, I would definitely see what uh, how the web server is configured and see if you can turn on the memory disk cache on it because it will speed it up. Um, okay. it'll, it'll, it, they, if, if they construct it and they're using the right mechanisms, it'll scale. In the or if you can correct it yourself. Are we on Elevator? Are we on Elevator? Yeah, all right. Well, uh, no. but we're on ID. It was alphabetical based on how they displayed in WordPress, so ah, they're not always named the same thing. Um, Lightbox 2, I just pretty much turn on for everything. It just, uh, when you display an image, a thumbnail, or a smaller image, or if you wanted to uh, upload your own full size image and display a 500 pixel version of your blog, and then allow people to click on it and upload the big image, it just displays it as an overlay, so it doesn't take you to a new page. It just overlays it onto your site. It's kind of elegant. It's nice. I can't. Yeah, <laughs> it is, and then at the bottom it'll actually give the caption, and then uh, back and forward arrows to other images on the page, so people can view it like a like a photo show. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and you can choose the background color for that. So it is kind of just an elegant way of displaying images. Uh, IE PNG Fix. That's another really quick plugin. Uh, if you're still concerned with a Internet Explorer six, which I mean, sometimes you have to be, and you know what? It's a really quick plugin, and it just for uh, PNG twenty fours. That have transparent backgrounds uh, in Internet Explorer, they'll show with either a, see a pink or a gray background, and it's pretty ugly instead of having that transparent background. And this will fix it 99% of the time. Other than Anthony, who's a web designer in the room or a web designer? Okay. So, do you use that plugin to compensate for IE issues, or do you just build it right into the? I just copy. There's a couple of different fixes you can use fixes in your CSS, but this is just one click. Yeah. Um, Google XML sitemaps. Uh, I'm not an SEO expert, but uh, if anyone wants to speak on that, uh, this will just generate an XML sitemap from your content. I think you generate it once. It puts in the format. Google has a specific format that they look for websites. I mean, they will crawl your website generally, but the sitemap basically, based upon their <coughs> predefined way of organizing a website, gives them one single file that they always look for and allows yeah. the website to be crawled and categorized. It's there. supported by other services, not just Google. And you run it once, and I think it, it updates as you update content on your blog. And I, but I think you're going to need a, one of their API keys. Yeah, which is easy to get. So I mean, it's an easy, quick thing, and it will help your, you know, your relevancy and your, you know, ease of, ease of being found you know, using Google or whatever. So it's, 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 it's it, to me, that's a must have. That's one of my biggest plugins. Yeah. This is actually one of my favorite ones because I feel it's probably a lesser known plugin. But if you do post from images from Flickr, uh, Flickr has a blog this feature, and I think actually did a blog post on this on promenademy.com. Um, you can you can configure how. Flickr will post to your blog. Uh, you can configure like the span and what, what content from each image will post to your blog, and then you just click blog this, it'll give you a little screen. Uh, it actually gives you a little area to write your blog post along with the image and then post it. But I mean, generally when I'm posting an image, it's part of a larger blog post, and I don't want to just edit my entire blog post in Flickr's window. It's a little too simple. Um, but I don't want to automatically post that image to my blog. So this takes the post that would publish and makes it a draft post. So no one sees it. You post it from Flickr, and then you go back into your admin panel, and you edit that post as you normally would. Uh, one thing I like doing is uh, you could use Firefox plugins at all for drafting posts. 
Um, yes. Fire is uh, really great. What time does the session end? Uh, I, no, I think it's ten more minutes. Okay. Yeah. All right. So. I just say before. Again, uh, it, it you know it allows uh, it pops up from the bottom of the window browser and you can go through and you can just say you know you have like the whole graphic interface and you can look at the code. You can look through all of your blog posts that are available to the side that you can just grab them and copy from them without actually logging into the admin of your WordPress account. Very cool. And yeah, actually, so these are Firefox plugins, not plugins for you know your WordPress, but plugins that you install into your browser. Uh, one, 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 one of the plugins I love is um, WP Polls. It's a great Ajax-based um, thing to do like quick polls. Is that Lester Chan? Yes. Okay. Lester Chan, I mean, this is just my personal plug. If you Google Lester Chan and WordPress plugin, he makes them awesome, awesome, very simple, very easy. WordPress plugins. One of them that I use is the email plugin, which allows you to email. You know, it's a nice, quick way to email posts and you know, email things around. Um, and uh, he's a really good developer. How do you use the poll? One? But it's 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 good. So. I used Democracy, which does polls, years ago, and it was limited in its features. Yeah, WP uh, polls is awesome. It's polls. easy to use set up. <laughs> um, do follow. Now this um, this takes off the evil no follow attribute. I don't really know how evil it is. I think for SEO purposes it's actually slightly better to have the no follow attribute um, on your if, comments. If you don't want to pass link to yes. to somebody, um, so if you don't like somebody and you're uh, so, talking about their website, you can put the, the no follow is good to put. Okay. Because if you actually like them and want to give them some like these you can And this is global, so it'll it'll add or remove for all of your bloggers, all of your commenters. So if you generally like your commenters, do this so that they get some juice from actually commenting on your blog. Yeah, when, when, when it, when, oh, sorry. Can you see? Uh, if they look at the yeah. Yeah. But, it, but, it, but it won't be discriminatory. It's everybody, right? Yeah. So, so, but the idea is, is that I mean, you know, with your website, especially as you gain, you know, more and more relevancy on your page rank, the you're basically giving out credibility. You're giving out relevancy to those websites. And I mean, if you go to like very, very popular blogs like TechCrunch, for example, which is a, you know about startups and entrepreneurship. People will just post comments, and I'm sure they probably have no follow at yeah. this point, but early on, people just post like, oh yeah, I do the same service just to try to get links from tech yeah. they're looking for. So if you're trying to get links, like, yeah, people can't see it unless they look at your code, but those few people that know enough to look at your code yeah. and find out, maybe you'll attract some more people. I just do it because I think it's good karma. Um, but like I said, if you don't like your commenters, take that off. Has anyone ever noticed it and asked you about it? No. Um, Comment for quick tags. Uh, when people are posting comments, this gives them quick tags for bold, italicized. Insert a link here. Uh, there, are, there are a couple. There were there were comment quick tags, and there were comment quick tags reloaded, and just these plugins just didn't get updated. So then someone would take it over, and, and now the one I use is comment form quick tags, which works with WordPress current version. Uh, all in one SEO pack is. What do you think? Is that the best SEO plugin? I'm going to be talking ever? about SEO WordPress okay. plugins. I was going to say, I was going to defer to Jamie on that question. I don't want to talk too much about it because if you're really interested in SEO plugins, your session's next, right? right? right. So, yeah. um, but I've been told this is the best SEO plugin, and I think there are many, but it really works for me. But Jamie could just hold it for us under the bus and say, no, it's absolutely not. I just want to it's the one I like. Awesome. Okay. Cool. Uh, align RSS images when you align images left or right to have the text wrap around them in your blog post. They won't do that in your feed. Um, it doesn't really matter that much because it's a feed. No one really wants it to be or, you know, it just makes it expects nice. it to be styled, yeah. but it kind of makes it look nice. Yeah. Um, and then a Kismet, which comes with WordPress, and you know, I've used it and I've had no problem with it. I've used it just because it, it rolls out with WordPress. The only limitation with it, and I, and I think you'll find this, is that there's no ability to really whitelist. I mean, whitelist a particular individual. There's um, uh, uh, Spam Karma, I think, was a plugin that I used for for a while. Um, I don't even know if it's being maintained anymore. Before really, I got into you know, started to realize that the Kismet is great. But the problem is, you can get false positives. Obviously, you can moderate those comments and not be spam. And it will learn generally over time, but the problem is you can't just immediately whitelist somebody. For example, there is a commenter 
uh, on a particular blog, she just kept getting, from work, she just kept getting put in the spam folder, yeah. approved, again, it took like six or seven posts for a kid to finally learn that that was Maybe there was some jerk that she worked with that kept spamming you. <laughs> or, or there was something like her work, the IP address. Yeah. Well, it was PNC, I mean, it's PNC.com, <laughs> so maybe they did something like that. So, so I it was built by Adderick's. Yes. Um, that's not true. Uh, you want to talk about any of your... Yeah, well, I want to give an opportunity for anybody yeah, sure, to ask questions. Or... Not Spam Karma, yes. Spam Karma used to put a little footer, or it used to put a little piece of text in the foot. I haven't seen, I haven't seen Kismet break. You should break break. Have you seen that with Kismet? Well, I've seen it with any kind of Sure. The theme might be outdated, and, um, and I would just compare it to, or first just try the default theme, make sure it's not one. Mm -hmm. The kids must be So, I mean, one of the, uh, I'll go through mine very, very quickly. I mean, we talked a little bit about Supercast. I started to play with this. I don't have a lot of experience with it, which is why I wanted to get, you know, um, a, a lot of input. I just talked about the WP WordPress email plugin, which allows you know, people will send emails, email things around. So that's kind of like Bookmarkify, but for email. Yeah. And I think Bookmarkify does have an email option. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, time zone, you know, time zone plugin, there's a couple, but basically because, you know, your time zone gets out of sync, especially with. Well, it has, a, it has a, in the settings, you can pick the Chicago time zone minus UTC. Instead of just picking minus five, you just scroll through and find Chicago, and it'll update the. the I'm waiting for it to change the same time to be sure. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, that's if, it, if it goes by the Chicago time zone, then it should auto update right. the time zone. Yeah. But we'll see. Yeah, I, I, I don't know, because I've seen they've added some of that time zone stuff, but in the meantime, just in case, you know. Because it just it just it gets weird when you start seeing posts that you're like, I know that this is you know, this is out of sync. So um, search meter is interesting. I've just started using this one. It basically allows you to track searches through, I mean you could have searches through Google, but actually it tracks search terms on your website. So if you go in and somebody types in search terms, you're able to see what people are searching for actually on you know, your WordPress website. So feed burner pl uh, feed, uh, the feed burner plugin for WordPress. I just took a lot of the, the main plugin pages and used them as headlines. And I'm gonna add some detail in, in, in the information about these plugins. But basically the feed burner plugin for WordPress allows you to you know, handle and redirect your work, all of your WordPress native feeds. Because WordPress comes with you know, standard RSS feed and, make, and then remap it to yeah. the feed burner. So it's, it's just, you set it up on feed burner and then you take that address that you created on feed burner and just plug it in there and it's good to go. Yeah. Yoast website, or Yoast makes some really good plugins. One of them is a, an enhanced contact form. I mean, one of the things that you know, typically from you, you don't want to do is actually put your like email address out there and say email me because obviously you're going to get you know, crawled by spam, you know, spammers and you get email. So what it does is it allows you to put a very simple contact me form, a little captcha, you know, sort of uh, uh, you know, check uh, anti-spam deterrent, and allows people to just email you to whatever address you. Now I use uh, C forms to uh, buy. C Forms is a great, delicious thing. great form tool. I actually should have put that up there. C Form it's 2 is, is fantastic. With C Form 2, you can use it for email, but versus this, which is specifically, or I'm sorry, uh, which, yeah. this, which is yeah, directly, specifically directed to contact us forms, there's a, a, a plugin called C Form 2, which allows you to build custom forms for anything. So let's say, I mean, for example, we're Pittsburgh, which is my t-shirt company. I have a contact or a submission form for ideas. I use C Forms 2. And it sends everything through email, or you can or or it'll save it on the, uh, in your database. Exactly. So you and, can keep that. And you can export. I, I do find that sometimes people like using forms rather than clicking on the email link. Like you're talking about for spam purposes, so your email's not out there. Um, but I have yes. one client. He has a contact page. It's got his like uh, Facebook and other contact in his email. But people always contact him through his FAQ, which has a form on it. I just think people are more comfortable with forms sometimes. That's how I get online. So you like C form yeah. better than Contact Form Seven? You, you are, or have you compared it to? Contact I mean, if I'm doing something, if I just need a contact form, it's nice because it's just there, bam, bam, bam. C form two can get pretty complicated because you yeah, have to do a lot of tagging and changing. I mean, it, it, it's not to say that it's it's really difficult, but it's it's more involved. Because right. Contact Form Seven is like what we did if you saw the, uh, the form for submitting sessions for PodCamp. We built that out of Contact Form Seven. You can do multiple choice. Um, 
and have a whole bunch of kinds of fields, you know, like you would. With the does it have like, like, does yes. that skip logic or logic? You know, if you pick something, does it have a, you know? A, no, it does not. Does okay. C form seven? Yeah. Uh, no. No, I just no. was curious. So it does. Uh, 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 form seven that does tie sure. into a kid's mic to help uh, filter the spam. Okay, so well, that, that was my question actually. Do these filter spam? I have a capture. Yeah, he yeah, has a capture. Yeah, a so, yeah. re Recapture, re yeah. which was sold. So yeah. by, by who? Okay, so we're at just about out of time. A lot of the remaining, I mean, you can go to Void PGH plugin. A lot of, I, John and I share a lot of the yeah, same plugins. We have an XML generator and hand Google Analytics generator. I like this one too. I wasn't sure if that was like an everyday kind of thing. Search and replace is very much a utility plugin. It allows you, if you're, you're like, you know what, I've been using a term for something and I really want to take it, for example. You know, like if you were referring to yourself as one name and you want to change it for another, you go to search. You know, I wanted to make every instance of where it said pod safe music yeah. on the G spot capitalized. Yes. You can't do that. It'll yeah, I also <coughs> do some uh, simple tags because before WordPress 2 and 7, there were no tags in WordPress. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I've been sure. using that for a year, a couple of years, and it's really nice. Um, these are all live on Delicious, uh, YPGH slash plugin and Carbon Amphibia slash plugin, we'll just leave them up. Yeah, they're available to you. Thank you guys so much for attending. If you have any other questions, feel free to